Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Shale gas and nuclear are the two most controversial energy topics currently being debated in South Africa. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some recent developments for both energy carriers. Hi Terence. Hi. South Africa has made some progress in beginning the processing of outstanding shale gas exploration right applications. What does this mean? Well, we've had a moratorium in place in the processing of exploration rights uh, for shale gas in the Karoo Basin. And there have been a few that have been sitting with the Petroleum Agency of South Africa for a number of years now, in fact, since before February 1, 2011. So these applications were put in probably in 2010. And because of the moratorium, there hasn't really been any processing or movement on this. And the decision now of the consultations with the DMR is that PASA will start processing the application for Shell, for Falcon, and for Bundu oil and gas. Bundu is a challenger energy of Australia's a South African unit. And they'll start looking at um, preparing the way to either give a, a yes or no as to whether an exploration right can be granted to those companies. But they have also indicated that because of the lag, they would like the, um, the environmental management programs around uh, the, the applications to be revised and reviewed and revisited. And there'll have to be some more public consultations around those. So that will have to now uh, get underway. But it is a significant development in the sense that we haven't had any movement in this area and there's a decision to now start processing them. But it does come before uh, the full final regulations have been, you know, gazetted or published for the governance of shale gas exploration and mining, which comes as a bit of a surprise. We've had these draft regulations for some time now. And, uh, you know, you would have expected that there would be a process to finalize the final ones. And also the past has said that the, the, at this stage, in terms of the, the regime that's being followed, uh, that even if an exploration right is granted, that the, the companies won't have a right to do exploratory fracking. And I think that's a bit of a, a showstopper for most of the, well, all the companies because that's part of the exploration phase. It's not just about core samples, not just about more seismics. It's also about to see whether you can activate and stimulate the gas to come out. So I think the, there's still more movement needs to be happening on the, the regulation front. But what, what the indications are is that the, the way is being cleared, as was uh, sort of declared by President Jacob Zuma in his second State of the Nation in the year after the elections, that shale gas mining is on the agenda. The way is being cleared, but more has to be done before we actually start seeing any proper exploration and development taking place. Although it seems that um, once the minister has granted the exploration right uh, within the next uh, eight months is the sort of schedule, that some sort of preliminary work could start taking place. And the view is that maybe towards the end of 2015, we might see some preliminary work taking place in the crew. And then uh, there was also some news out of Parliament to suggest that actually some of the exploratory fracking could even start taking place in 2015. On the nuclear front, we've seen the first vendor parade taking place. Yeah, this is also interesting. Uh, it got some interesting headlines because it took place in a, a resort in the Drakensberg. And uh, it, was, it took place quite soon after the DOE announced that they'd be having these vendor parades and uh, maybe caught every, every, everyone off guard a bit. And uh, um, it was not surprising to see that the Russians were up first because we had that uh, announcement earlier this year that caused much consternation from Vienna that the Russians and the South Africans had signed a deal which could uh, open the way for eight VVER Rosatom reactors. It was then subsequently massaged in a sense that to say that this was just a framework agreement. And then we saw that a similar deal or a similar framework agreement was signed with the French. And then there was an, an uh, indication that uh, this framework agreement was also in place with the South Koreans and that there probably would be further ones coming with the Americans and the Japanese in the months to come. But anyway, the, it caught the headlines, it caught the attention because it took place in, a, uh, in this resort in the Drakensberg and it did seem to be a bit of a secret meeting, but the DOE did put out a, a statement confirming that the meet, meeting did take place, confirming that it was ready to explore what Ross Atom had to offer in terms of its technology, in terms of its localization of opportunities, in terms of the full um, nuclear value chain. And, we, and they do indicate that they expect to have similar vendor parades also hosted inside South Africa. I don't know whether it will be at the same 
resort or not uh, with, with other countries if they are ready and willing to participate in such, uh, such uh, a meeting. Um, and this they frame as part of the preparatory phase for a possible procurement uh, process. We still don't have clarity yet as to what the integrated resource plan or the updated version is going to say about nuclear. Um, and we, but we still we seem to have a strong commitment coming through, regardless from government, that they would like to move towards a procurement during 2015 for uh, nuclear, which I think will take many months, you know, to meet, reach to a, a phase where, because of the costs involved, and given that the utility company Eskom doesn't have any money, that it's going to have to be somehow vendor financed. Um, this is going to take some time to get to financial close. But I think we need to still have this clarity from the Integrated Resource Plan, the RP, as to what we're thinking in terms of nuclear, and uh, I'm hoping that will come sooner rather than later. What is the likely outcome of these two processes? Well, I think there seems to be a commitment to, you know, pushing ahead on these two very controversial fronts. Uh, you know, both are going to face serious opposition, very organized groups around both uh, uh, nuclear and um, fracking in terms of opposition, and I think that it's not it's not an easy terrain. And I, you can imagine, you know, the nuclear program would have to go, and and these uh, uh, shale gas operations would have to go through environmental impact assessments, public consultations, in terms of all our, our rules and regulations around such activities. So, I think it's some time off before we actually see real fracking or real nuclear. But there seems to be a, a determination. Uh, some people would say an unwise, almost blind determination to push ahead on both fronts. But I think there's a general feeling that if there is uh, this sort of gas resource in South Africa, we need to find out whether, whether or not it exists and whether we can actually extract it. And on the nuclear front, while the costs and the financial engineering around that is a major concern, there are also ma major benefits to nuclear. So we at least having a more sensible debate around both the benefits but I think that uh, the cost uh, side, and I think on the shale energy side, it's really about the environmental cost, particularly around water and the water scarce crew. And on the nuclear front, of course, there's the environmental and the waste issues, but I think it's really about the financial engineering of that project and whether South Africa can, aff can afford it. So I think, yes, we, there's a determination to move ahead. I think that's what we're seeing now. And there is some a bold action being taken. But I think we're some way off before you know, we're going to start seeing shovels in the ground for a nuclear reactor, or we're going to start seeing uh, well wellheads being assembled in the crew basin to start drilling and fracking for gas. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.